goes another 20 year old. Holy shit, I hate those guys. Got a 20 year old. Fuck those guys. Somebody help these 20 It's time to figure it out, Ricky. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Don't fucking touch me. Uh, fuck. It's so fucking hot, man. It's hot in here. Did you read the thing recently? 30 plus. Must be. No, it was, 30, it was 30 plus today and I felt chillier than this. Fuck. Why is it chillier during the day than it, than it is at night in our house? I don't know. It's, it's like the whole day the house is just heating up and then traps it. Just absolutely traps it. And then when everything gets a reasonable temperature outside... It stores that heat. It stores the heat. It doesn't leave. It yeah, doesn't. but that's how we roll on too many jams. <laughs> Show about all things 20-year-olds. With help from friends, experts, and our own personal experiences, we hope to shed some light on those issues that leave our age group lost and confused. Those issues, um, you know what? I had a bit... Uh, I got a few things to talk about today. We'll, Good. We'll, we'll get to the AC. Good. We'll get to the AC, but um, those issues being... Of our age group, primarily, especially during COVID, um, motivation, man. And uh, I think it's safe to say that I feel like I've finally snapped out of my COVID funk. You hit the wall? Put that Sorry. mic up there. Sorry, I just, the, the, the heat and the tape made some gooey stuff on the mic and I just checked my hand. But anyways. Yeah, yeah. Um. You you hit the wall. I hit the wall, man. You know, and okay, and also for the listeners, and I don't know, Robbie, if you know this either. So we'll, we'll hash this out at the beginning of this episode. But okay. uh, I didn't. Uh, we recorded an episode last week. If you're one of those listeners that listens every week, and you wondered why the episode last week didn't get posted, um, I uploaded it. I edited it. Everything went up there. It's on the YouTube. It's on the stuff. But I decided not to post it. I listened to it and I just... Uh, you didn't like it? I thought that... I just... I don't... You remember way back when uh, our buddy was telling us that he played the episode where we did it virtually? Yep. And it sounded like a phone call? Yep. That episode sounded like a virtual phone call. So Robbie and I last week, Robbie stayed at his cottage and I was in uh, in our house in Toronto. So we did it virtually. We hooked it all up and, you know, the content of the episode was fine and everything, but when I listened back uh, to the whole episode, I just kept being like, this is just a fucking phone call. Like, Still got that vibe, eh? I got the vibe and I also just, we were like in the episode like talking about how, I don't know, we were just talking about like, oh, we're kind of like bummed out because, you know, we don't get to do guests and we're losing steam and I was like... I don't know. Like you might have to give it a listen and let me know if I should post it up. But I just okay. like fuck it. Like w- let's just get back on the game. Start start throwing some content at people that's meaningful. Like start start putting some effort into the th- like. Yeah, I- I'm gonna be honest, man. We were really coast in there. It's it's been a coast fest. And I'm gonna no say doubt about it. I'll take I'll take a big part of the responsibility because I feel like. Um, you know, as much as as much as you tried to step it up, while I was, uh, you know, in my COVID funk and keep uh, keep some of the business element elements going, I think a lot of the times uh, when it's normal times, it's really um, uh, it's really usually like me that's like fucking uh, trying to light the lamp a little bit. You know what I mean? Like let's do this weird thing or like, let's get that going. Yeah. And, uh, without me pushing that you wield and everything yourself, I just feel like I just, I just, I haven't been pumped with how, with our content and with our, our efforts in, in general, mostly me. It's, it's been lackluster to say the least. Um, you're so gassed from the heat, man. You're so gassed. From yeah. The heat. I'm, I'm feeling it. Like I'm, uh, I'm just like a little bit out of it also. I was, um, I drank, I just drank. I spent the whole day pretty much in the sun. I was working out, went for a run and then, uh, and then driving back and it, I don't know, it just all kind of hit me. Well, you know what it is, dude? Sack the fuck up. All right. What would Jocko Willick say? Will Nick? Probably tell me 
Go catch up on some rest. You deserve it. No, you'd say sack the fuck up, all right? Like, just wake up. Just get going. I'm up. I'm up. I'm good. Um, yes. The uh, it just It's just been lackluster all around. And you, the motivation thing you're talking about here just right now in the house is the heat, dude. Like, just living in absolute 30 plus degrees 24-7 yeah. takes the energy out of you. You don't want to. For real. You, it's like, it's like heat-induced, like... Not what depression. What's the word when people have no energy? It's like, um, I don't even know. Complacent? Uh, not complacent. Just like low, low. When people have like low energy level, I think it's just literally called like they have low energy. The heat sucks it out of you. So, um, part of me snapping out of my COVID funk involved me taking care of some basic needs. Yeah. AKA, and I ripped out and bought a fucking AC today. Installed Atta it boy. in the window. I put that in my wall, flicked it on, and. I, Instantly got my energy back. Just yeah. felt so good in my house again. Yeah. And uh, I brought one home today also. Coincidentally, my Nana had uh, had one of those girthy big boys hanging at her house. Except I still haven't quite figured it out. It's I, I turned it on. I didn't get the instant gratification that you just explained yeah because uh i don't know there might be a filter to change yeah it might need, need it, might, it might have a bunch of dust in it like yeah, yeah it might be a little clogged it's, it's a little bit it's a little bit older but um gonna work it out you know my my room is uh it's not about it like you know it's 60 to 70 percent better than it was so yeah it's it's if it's 30 plus degrees in the main floor it's got to be about 30 this, these aren't exaggerations folks we're living in 30 plus degrees uh day day round the only relief we get is in the middle of the night or early morning sorry when it's just finally cooled off from the evening but anyway sorted took care of that but uh so i'll, I'll tell you i'll tell you about why i'm fired up today and, and what snapped me out yeah of okay my, yeah let's hear it well, okay, so I've been joking around. I mean, because I've been joking around in COVID being like, oh, I'm just like fucking drinking every night, like playing yeah. video games, like not working out. We're not doing mu much music stuff, like all, all this um, all this stuff. And it's been a bit of a joke, but I always said the whole time to you and Kevin, I was like, oh man, the way, the way I am, it's easy for me to snap out of stuff like this. Easy. I can do it anytime. Yeah. And I don't think easy was the word. I think simple is the right word. Okay. So. Um, exp further explain. Okay. Uh, how how I think and what I think people do a lot of the time yeah. is it's not that they don't know how to change themselves. It's not that they don't know exactly the things that they want to do. Yeah. And it's very simple to do those things. Simple steps. It's. It's very simple, but it's not easy because you have to want to change yourself. And that's the hard part. Yeah. That, and that's the stuff that I find no matter how much I motivate myself or, or if I like get on a little tangent and I fire you or Kevin up, yeah, you get that jolt of motivation. You take a few of the, the easy steps, simple steps, sorry. But what's the hard part is really wanting longevity yeah really wanting to maintain it routine discipline so what 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 happened with me is legitimately in quarantine you went back to your family home yeah i uh i was chilling here alone for the most part kevin was at his girlfriend's and i was quarantining alone for like the better part of 45 days and for me that is i don't mind living alone at all I fucking hate being stuck alone. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, I don't mind living alone when I got people to hang out with work to do business as usual. I'm going off. I'm going to hockey when I go to hockey, like this and that going on. Like life's good. Wait, what are you going to say? I'm going out fucking like, is, yeah, is I'm that... going out fucking <laughs> having dates. Like I literally was stuck alone. Yeah. And for me, like that was actually like a pretty dark, like I didn't want, I didn't want to face that. So, like immediately, I just like, it's like, oh, I'll just like, fuck off. This is a vacation. Why don't I do like, why don't I just play video games? And like, I just turned, I turned off my, my regular, like, don't do it filters. Like, don't cruise Instagram for hours. Don't cruise YouTube for hours. Don't play video games for hours. Just let myself go. And it's crazy how quickly, like, 
once you let a few things go, how, how much everything falls in line. Oh yeah. So I just I went from like I, 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 I like went from two extremes. Like we were going normal speed to hit the brakes, park the car, throw a tarp over it, eating shittily, barely eating, barely working out, playing video games most of the day. Legitimately I drank every night for forty five days and I was drinking like a lot. Like Nice. A lot. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, hundreds of dollars a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never seen you go out and pick up so much booze and just crush it. What's what's that? Uh, what's that one saying? How you do one thing is how you do everything. Yeah, yeah. That's that's I think sort of sums up your quarantine. Well, and then what happened is that the whole time I'm like, guys, like this is just me on quarantine, killing time. Um, it's e- it's gonna be easy for me to get out of it. But you know, every now and then when you'd come home, you know, we'd do a little bit of work, but I, I didn't snap out of it like I thought I would the second, you know, you came back. Mm-hmm. Um, because I, I honestly, I, I really didn't want to because I didn't have the same kind of like voices in my head that make me want to be, like normally I have like these fucking voices. I'm always thinking and when I get thinking, I get planning and when I get planning, I get, you know, laying out all these things that I want, how I'm going to do it and how I'm dissatisfied with where I'm at and, and I kind of move on that, but what I was doing uh, was literally distracting myself twenty four seven for forty five days plus sixty, almost seventy days. Like recently, mm-hmm. I would not spend a minute thinking. When I woke up, on TikTok, on Instagram, yeah, send some messages, get on the computer, watch some YouTube's, yeah, watch YouTube until. I got hungry enough that I'd eat some food. While I'm eating food, throw on a podcast. You're literally just trying to kill time throughout the day. Just trying to kill time. And anytime I got a text from anyone to hop in video games, I'd start playing video games. And I would never want to hop off because... Because that means you'd be alone with yourself again. And it's not even like I was... It's not not even like sad alone. Like I I really have no problem being alone. It's not like I was like depressed. It's just more like... I was just distracting myself from this reality that I just didn't really like. Yeah. I hated that I can't see my friends. I hated that I can't play hockey. I hate that like the world doesn't feel like this big anything is possible place right now like it always has before and I just I re- I just distracted myself from all that. And I think um I think now that things have been slowly getting back to normal and once you, I started hearing that you know COVID's not as bad as maybe we were, we anticipated. And are they saying that now? Yeah, like the the percentage of people that actually experience symptoms, um, you know, is is a lot lower than they realize. Which means that the percentage of people that are showing up at hospitals is a lot lower than the total amount getting it, which pushed down the percentage of people that are dying because of it. Like when you start crunching the numbers, yeah. So it turned out to be. You know, it's still deadly for the the at risk, but statistically, it's really not. You know, and it, it's not. It's not. It wasn't the plague that they thought it was going to be. Yeah. Um, still was bad, and I think you know everything. Everything that we did was right in anticipation because you you don't want those at risk people to die, um, un unneeding, unneedingly. But anyway, once the hope started coming back, and once we started opening up the social circles. I started to feel the same general optimism, you know, that, you know, anything is possible. Like, it, you know, it's, it, it's, it's just weird how, I don't know, like correlation COVID, COVID just, just, just fucked me up a little bit. I yeah. actually it really fucked me up. Like I just, it, it, I just didn't feel like myself. And, um, for, for a while I've been meaning to, to get back a little bit to normal, you know, get back to working out, get back to, you know, some basic uh, work and being productive. Um, but I I wasn't. And this is where I go from the easy to simple thing um, where I knew how to, I just didn't want to. And it was, it was a very simple route. And all I did to get back to normal mm-hmm. was shut off the distractions for a bit and think, Not, no lie. I spent uh, an hour of my car ride home from this weekend. Yeah. Um, with radio off, 
Yeah, with your own thoughts. With my own thoughts. And boom, boy, did everything rush back in. Everything. All my old thoughts. All my old man. You, you've been meaning to do this, haven't you? What about that? What about this? You've been meaning to do this and that. And then I started to feel like that same kind of healthy dissatisfaction and like drive to do to do more. And um, I started to feel really good and motivated. And I knew if I went home and just dis- kept distracting myself, I'd lose that. So I went back to my old, you know, don't do it. Like, don't get on your phone before bed. Don't, don't be on the computer in, in your bed, on your phone in bed. And the only thing I do, the only thing I allow myself to do in bed is yeah. my planner or read. Yeah. And I, how many episodes have we done? Fucking hundred and whatever. And how many times have we talked about the simple tools and tricks that help us stay on top of our shit? Yeah. You know, planning out our day the night before. Yeah. Planning out your week, the beginning of the week, planning out your months at the beginning of the month, and then always looking back at that shit. It's not hard to do. Mm-hmm. So all I did last night for the first time in all of quarantine is I didn't distract myself and I wrote down what I wanted to do the next day. And then when I woke up in the morning, mm-hmm. I just didn't distract myself and I, I got up. I think that's another key. Like you You've have been sleeping to sleep in a lot too. I actually haven't. I've been laying in bed on the computer. Oh, you lay. Okay. I get up at, but like what, a height of your video game, you were like, you're going late. You'd go late and then. Uh, at the height height, at the very yeah. beginning, when I was going to like 2, 3, 4 a.m., yeah. Yeah. So that only lasted a month. Yeah. And then I started going to bed at, you know, 11, 12, 31, and I'd get up at 9 to 10. And then more recently, I, well, I'd get up before 9, and I would just like lay, just lay in bed, like fucking um, just distracting myself. Uh, so uh, that's all I did this morning is, you just, you just do the simple things that I had. That's what I mean. The simple things that I know work. Mm-hmm. It's not like I didn't know how to do all my shit. It's simple. Yeah. I just didn't want to because I didn't. I just was distracting myself and I didn't want to face my reality. Do you know what I mean? And I think when I see a lot of the people around me, when I see the ones that um, that struggle the most. With motivation, I see distraction as being like the biggest difference between them and me when I'm on my when I'm on my game. Oh, Oh, one hundred percent. Distraction should be shit, or at least they feel they feel more enjoyable. You know, whether it's movies or shows, or I even I even think like through like throughout the day, like. Uh, some like when I loafed around for a day, and then it's like nighttime, and it's like, you know, time when to watch a movie or to like hang out or like chill with friends and stuff. It's like, and you've already fucked off all you've day. You've already <laughs> fucked off all day. You're like, I don't really want to do that. Like, th- that's not like enjo- like that won't be relaxing. Like I, you know, you're you're kind of like you you sh- you should sort of exhaust yourself throughout the day, and and uh yeah. you know you know put in the work and then everything else it's just much more enjoyable afterwards but it's just funny how much like we spent we spent the better part of 2 years documenting um like a uh, all the different things that we try and test and figure out in terms of motivation and life design and like how to change your habits and stuff like that. And we always find the answers. And then it like clockwork, like I think most people on planet earth, Mm -hmm. you forget so easily with distractions. Oh yeah. yeah. And, um, there's a bunch of other things that, that factor into that, that my, my kind of return. Uh, but yeah, I just, I found myself just incredibly unsatisfied incredibly unsatisfied when I really sat and thought about how I'm spending my time. And it's not that I'm saying people that play a lot of video games live an unsatisfactory life or people that watch a lot of YouTube live an unsatisfactory life. It's it's like there is time for that stuff. If you do everything else you need to do around it. Oh yeah. So if you're if you're a professional video gamer 
but you're able to still, you know, work out, you know, take care of uh, your needs, like getting air conditioning or getting your car repaired, you know, still fit in some time with family and still fit in the healthy balance things in life. And yet you still put an eight hour shift on playing your video games. You're, you're, identical to someone who works an eight hour shift at a job. It's not really where you spend your time. If it's a, especially if you're getting paid to do something like that and you're, and you're, you're doing a passion, but it's the stuff that it's the stuff that really doesn't, I don't know. Like, like I really do think that there is a hierarchy of time wasting. And what, like, like lay it out for me in what way? Like, I, I think, you know, as much as I do truly believe you're wasting time when you play all that guitar, and I say it all the time, that it's, it's uh, I think it's a procrastination. I think it's also a distraction. There at least is a productive element to it. You're an amazing guitarist because of it, and uh, you keep up with your skills and, and you know, and all that stuff. The same way, um, you know, depending on the content maybe I'm consuming on YouTube or podcasts, it's a waste of time because I'm doing it so much and it is a distraction and a procrastination, but I'm learning a lot. And you know, like, you know what I mean? Like there, that, so that might be like a step below the guitar as a hierarchy of wasting time. And then below that, it's like social media and shit where like, there really isn't much value to like, cruising or you know what i mean like yeah i okay so i i don't think hobbies though are you know and w whether that is like guitar playing or it's like what like i think you should yeah I, th I think you should have these things you know that you get enjoyment from mm -hmm. that you use to pass time like otherwise what you like sit and stare at a wall all day or or, or do whatever you do like you know whether it's like like learning new skills like i i don't think learning new skills or you know maintaining skills really is it, like like I, I i like i guess you are passing the time but i wouldn't call it sure know, pa passing waste wasting the time yeah wasting's a bad um, word wasting's I, a bad I word i think um i th i think you know activities where you're just um with, like like with with the with the goal in mind of you know okay i need to like kill a few, I, I, like maybe i'm not wording this properly but like I, like I need to waste some time right now or like i need to just like drain my head like you know go on youtube and like scroll yeah, like mindless endless, mindless, mi mindless yeah, stuff, yeah yeah you know um but that, i think that's that's in a different category so that, that's what i mean what i sorry when i guess when i say the hierarchy i think spectrum is more of the right word and instead of wasting time passing time but let me give you an example of, of why i called guitar because I know it's a hobby. The same way video games say for me is a hobby or riding motorbikes. Sure, or, yeah, yeah. Um, they're a hobby, but the way I have my life set up currently, they are not a productive element in my life. They, get, they give me no, no monetary or creative or like, there's no output from that. I'm not contributing to the world. I'm not um, creating a... a anything tangible from it do you know what i'm saying yeah so yeah if you crafted your life where you know that time spent in video games is productive like you're a streamer making content making money outputting yeah. it then that goes from hobby to productive output that you know can can can, can be a, a a tangible resource that that you can you know that you can use but that being Removing that element from it is a pure hobby. So say if you're like, you, your hobby is trains. Yeah. And it's a private hobby. You don't output anything of it. You don't make any money off it. You don't do anything. I, I don't think the best way to spend your time is eight to 10 hours on trains all day. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I, I'm, yeah. You still have to have, you still have to have a purpose. Yeah, uh, 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 yeah, uh, for sure, for sure. A way to uh, make income, a way to provide, to pay for these hobbies. And for me, I think the most important thing, so instead of, for me, instead of focusing on hobbies for, for the last however many years, I've always tried to focus on how can I find 
a way to like my my productive pursuit as much as a hobby. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm like, okay, the reason I want to be a rock star is because I love rocking out. I would do that for free. Yeah. It's a hobby. Yeah. But it's something, it's a hobby I can turn into a productive output. Yeah. I love putting out content. I love putting out being in music videos and being on stage and writing and releasing songs. So for me, I'm like, it's... I'm like, oh, this is more, this is like on the spectrum of of importance or the hierarchy or whatever. Like number one for me is like, I want to put that stuff first. So so don't you vow, like, you know, you love rocking out. Like if that's like being put first, wouldn't you consider like being good at live performances or having the skill set to play these instruments at part, like integral to that? Yeah, like, but like if you if that? you if you honestly could tell me that the the heavy hours you're putting in on guitar are all skill pushing elements and not just playing different songs you like and enjoying doing some stuff. Yeah, but I I do not think you're maximizing that hobby as practice. I think if if you were a if I were to break down you as a rock star, as an individual, there is many elements where you're not maximizing your time, um, where you're spending it on, uh, uh, you know, do you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, explain to me if you think the time in your room spent on the guitar is is at all achieving your goal of being a rock star other than just that one element of being a rock star, which is being good at your craft, which I put in, a significantly, like significantly less amount of time into, yet have not too much of a noticeable difference on my output abilities and my craft. Because, you know what I mean? Like, do you know what I'm saying? I I think, I I don't know. I, I think it's, I think it's different. I like, like why, why, why can't, you know, I don't, I I don't know what the defensive point is there, but I you, I just I somewhat disagree. I well obviously because you do it all the fucking time. It, yeah, it's um, what I'm saying is if I were to birds, I, I'm this is just my opinion. I if yeah. I knew what was right for everybody, I'd be the president of the world. Like I I don't know the answers. I'm not a I'm not a, a an established rock star yet myself. But if I were to break down the way you practice guitar, when you go in there, you don't often practice the songs that we play you don't often write new music often i know you do it sometimes you don't often work on you know the the areas that you actually use on stage a lot you spend a lot of the time learning and enjoying yourself playing other people's songs that you like that you just like playing along with and yeah that helps your finger movement no and i i i challenge myself more than it's challenging and yeah the same way me go like i find video games challenging i challenge myself I'm, I'm trying to i'm trying to break it down where like what i'm saying is if if you took the amount of time you played on guitar and broke it into songwriting yeah versus just straight theory i'm, I'm saying you're you're over emphasizing your the enjoyable hobbyistic parts of your guitar and underemphasizing the productive, um, practical elements of being a rock star, which is um, what I what I would assume to turn your hobby productive is the practical elements, the songs you're actually playing live, writing new music, creating new riffs. Like take a Scott Goodwin for an example. He probably plays as much, if not more, guitar as you, but he's always turning that. Do you know what I'm saying? He's always turning that into he's he's pushing boundaries as much as you. He knows theories as much as you, but he he outputs far more than you as an individual in terms of um, being a uh, the output you need to require to be a rock star with that time spent. If that if that makes sense, like sure f- from an outsider's perspective, a, a lot of the times when you're playing guitar. I often find you do it instead of doing other stuff you know you got to do for the band, which 
which I know it's still a productive output because it is still band related, but I also find you overemphasize theory and the enjoyable components of uh, playing other people's stuff, which would be great if you then took that and was like, I'm learning all these other great songs. Now I'm going to write all these new riffs and, and, you know, maybe hone your abilities to record the guitar into logic. Like I'm, I'm trying to saying you're, you're overemphasizing the hobbyistic elements of it. It, it, and we don't need to break down your guitar this much. This actually is like nothing to do with what I wanted to talk about. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, th- you, like you don't, do you know what I'm saying? Like just to to close that off. Like, sure. Let's let's move on. Yeah. Um. But anyway, so with hobbies, yours luckily is playing guitar. So I still think that's a very valuable hobby for your career, but for the rest of the stuff I was doing, I'm saying there's a spectrum of value and like listening to podcasts is valuable up into a point. And I think beyond which you get diminishing returns and it's, and it's really just time wasting procrastination, hobbyistic. And I'm trying to say that all these hobbies have those points, including playing guitar. That was my point before we went into that tangent. Does that make sense? Yeah. There's a point at which you know you're doing something to distract yourself there's a point at which you know you're doing something to um, procrastinate. There's a point at which you know you're getting value at something. And if you're honest with yourself, it's not hard to tell those points. Does that make sense? Yeah. So with with this spectrum, I find you hit that limit very quickly on social media where I'm on it and I am not getting value. I'm getting chuckles, but I'm not getting, you know, I'm, I'm, I like, I hit that threshold very quickly where I'm like, oh, am I really, is my life really benefiting from this hobby? Am I really getting value? Am I really, you know, it, especially how you use it? If you don't, if you're not using social media productively, like posting pictures, reaching out to people, connecting, using hashtags, do you know what I'm saying? Like you're, you're overemphasizing on the hobbyistic points of, of social media and then it becomes distraction it becomes procrastination with podcasts if you're just listening to comedians banter all the time you know there yeah there is an element of benefit self benefit you can get from hearing comedians talk because it's insightful it's relaxing you learn different perspectives you learn how to have a sense of humor about yourself but beyond a point you really know you're just entertaining yourself and it's and it's 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 the it's you know you're you, and if you're doing that in lieu of other stuff, you're crossing that line. And I feel like the same goes for YouTube. It depends what you're using YouTube for. It depends what you're using video games for. But I think recently the revelation I I, I had is that, you know, this these were all just fucking distractions. And I was not using anything, any of them productively. And um, I just kind of snapped out of it yesterday. And uh, and, uh, I just, um, I think that's, uh, that's just something I see in a lot of people. And I, 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 like, dude, maybe I'm wrong. And if I am wrong, then a hundred percent, like it's possible. But when I see like you doing that, even the way you defended, um, your time on the guitar, it's like, it makes me, why, why, why why can't you want to be really good at something though? That's, that's what I'm just like. Think, think in my head. I th- like. I think I, when I play and practice, I just I, I want to get better. And like, yeah, like yeah, distraction sometimes. But also, I like most of the times when I go into practicing these days, I actually like, I like, routinely keep track of like what I'm doing and like milestones that I want to hit. And mm-hmm. and I'm like I I break down my time to, to like I th- I think I've honestly I like I think I've gotten better at practicing and breaking out time I'm just I'm I, I don't know yeah but I'm, I, I guess I'm more just talking about what's not being done around it normal times I'm not talking about COVID times yeah I'm talking about when I used to really get on your case and be like there is a world of work that needs to be done to make you a rock star and you're and the only reason I I bring up your playing of guitar 
is not that it's not valuable. You need to be an amazing guitarist to be a rock star. But I'm saying it, it may be really hard for you and to recognize the lines when it is like when it is the best use of your time. Because remember, I, I used to say, especially before we had a productive output with the band, you were doing a fuckload of practicing and getting really good at guitar in a vacuum. Yeah, in, in a true. productive, in, a, in an outputless vacuum. And I'm not trying to say that it is not, it's not, it's not, that's not, I'm trying to say that what you're doing in there isn't quality practice. Yeah. I'm getting incredibly good at my hobbies. Yeah. I'm just saying in a vacuum, it doesn't matter how fucking good I am at video games. In a vacuum. Yeah. I'm not doing the 30 other things around it. I would need to transform that into productive output. So do you know what I'm saying? I'm hyper focusing on the 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 elements of yeah okay like I'm getting better stats and getting better stuff like that. But if if it was my career choice, I would need to be streaming. I would need to be making clips. I would need to be posting daily. I would need to be making connections to other gamers, playing with them, trying to hit special types of shots, doing stuff I didn't want to do with the game. That, sure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. That would make it a productive output. Yeah. So I'm saying, and that's what I was saying about your guitar, is that in a vacuum, yeah, there's nothing wrong with wanting to be the best at something, but if LeBron James got the fucking best at basketball on his home court and he and he never went to tryouts or did the all the other bullshit involved in making the NBA, do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Fair. There's a, I think there's like he could, there there is people out there in the world that I I watch on YouTube that are hyper good at dunking or three points and yeah, they're it's not like, the fuck do you do with that but that's what I'm saying it's like they hyper focus on the things that are most enjoyable to them and luckily for them they still did the other things involved to have a Instagram following or YouTube following and create content and make it a productive output but there's people in the world that do that stuff in a vacuum and that's why i get on your case about um guitars because it's incredibly hard to tell if you're in unless the stuff around it is getting done if it's a distraction or a procrastination or not to, if you're only doing the one aspect really well sure which is why i was saying i put in i'm not i'm not nearly as good at guitar as you but on stage I'm almost un unnoticeably different than you because I'm exactly as good as I need to be to be my role in the band. Does that make sense? Sure, yeah. Sure, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. It, we've never once played a show where my guitar ability has been adequate and in inadequate. Inadequate. No, you're right. And my vocals are... But, yeah, okay. You can continue. It, where, it, and I'm not even saying like do the bare minimum. I mean like they're where they need to be where I think they need to be in order to be a rock star, in order to be a performing musician. Um, and I put in just enough amount of time to to be talented enough to be, you know, the front man of a, of a band, right? Yeah. Uh, during normal times. Yeah. So for me, I find that means I'm maximizing my time because I have, I'm putting the right amount of time there and I'm putting the right amount of time into thinking of content ideas and making sure the pictures get taken. And like, again, normal times. I'm not talking about my last 75 days. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I, I was just thinking that how many people, you know, are breaking down their hobbyistic and distraction times and, and all that shit into productive elements or are identifying that they are hobbies or distractions or procrastinations. Like, how much are people looking into that? And if you don't really take the time to think, I don't think you ever fuck it. I don't think you ever figure it out. I don't think if you take time alone in silence each day, each night to break down what you're doing, I don't think, I don't think you can ever get the, the out of the muck enough to see how the hours are really being spent as a theory. And this is, this is again, this, all this info that I just spat out came from a few hours of, of like, pontificating on my, yeah. my last 75 days yeah not to throw you under the bus um with the guitar because you've been uh you've been uh, i just meet me much better uh last 75 days i th i think i i look at 
hobbies where you're like learning i i don't know i just i don't look at them as much of time wasters or um like hobbies like i always look at you know whether it's like me playing playing guitar you know um practicing like i always look at look at that as like being productive in in a way that's like progressing a skill i was i always look at like you know hobbies and like it's like uh you know if you're you're passing time whatever whatever you want to call it things where you're learning new skills i always think of that as as being productive and you know like as opposed to really mind numbing stuff not numbing but i think you're i think the amount of time you're spending on guitar doing that stuff you're in a margin of improvement that is so minor for the time you're putting in that the time would be better spent does that make sense at this moment in your career sure i i could probably i could probably allocate time better but like I think you're in the margin of improvement on your guitar where you're making you're you're making your progression cuz you're a very skilled guitarist, you know what I mean? Like your progression right now, you're pushing the limits in areas that you know, if you were if you were a touring musician, it would be great to have those extra elements to find new ways to use them in songs, but I'm saying you have such an arsenal now that time might be better spent throwing all that skill set into creation. Yeah. Throwing all that skill set yeah. into riffs, into do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Instead fair. of just practicing the skill to get better, which is which is something I f- I find myself usually very good at is um maximizing is is putting time in efficiently, but um the thing the thing too about it is I think we're both at extremes where your passion for the craft yeah. far exceeds mine. And it's a blessing we have that in the group. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And my passion for, you know, doing a hundred things at once and and trying to, you know, do f- it's 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 also true. You you also you you care less not that not that you don't care at all but you care less about about sort of overall like i i don't know what to call it like really like diving deep into like you know like the mute like the theory and the the, the mute yeah like guitar stuff or like do, you do, know but there's a reason behind it is what i'm trying to say okay it's it's all intentional i still find with my skill set that I'm incredibly productive in writing music. Yeah, for sure. In writing melodies. I have no, a lot sure. of output for, for, I haven't found myself wanting more skills at the current level of music we're at. The, the te- and that that's what I'm saying. Like the, I extract a lot of value from your passion for the craft. Yeah. When we write. Cause I go, I want this. And you go, this is how you do it. And I go, cool, cool. But, um, I also, uh, I also play music differently than you. I'm, uh, I'm more by ear. I'm more by feel. I, you know what I mean. So like our skill sets are very different in that sense. We're um, at a different stage in music. I will want to progress. Like I talk about it all the time. Oh, like once once I get to a certain stage, yeah, I'm probably going to want to advance my my vocal skills. Yeah. I'm going to want to get a coach that can help me reach. Um, certain areas once we get to a certain stage of music i'm probably going to want to learn um uh once i start once i stop being able to write good sounding music with my skill set on guitar yeah i'm probably going to want to push the boundaries in a few areas maybe pick up synth maybe pick up you know what i mean like pick up other musical skills yeah but um at the moment i think we are not extracting the right productive value from our current skill set. So I'm more focused because I think at least it's probably been beneficial that one of us is more focused on, I'm always trying to think about how are we going to get this band noticed? How, how are we going to get this band? What are all the things that we have to do outside of the music theory 
in a locked room just getting better at moving your fingers and knowing the scales of guitar and the scales of vocals do we have to do to make sure that we get a paycheck for that music one day we get we get to live this life Bec- yeah but um yeah it, it, it's it's a complex issue um and i think i think i don't really have the right balance yet either but i think between the two of us we're on a good path um where we're both at but uh yeah, like uh, yeah, you know what I mean. I got- it's yeah, it's yeah, uh, yeah. It's it's a, it's complex. It's it's complex, but definitely when, when, I'm uh, when I'm when I'm feeling myself and I'm in the, and I'm in the cut of productivity, I get distracted by all those other things that it's going to take to get famous, successful. I get wrapped up in. Uh, in thinking about the million different things, um, but it also comes down to that I do that with uh, all the other businesses, and I spend such a small amount of, like I'm spread so thin on each of them that none of them move forward that fast in my mind. You know what I mean? Like I chip away at like one small chip a day at Famous, and then one small chip a day at the podcast, and then one small chip a day at. Um, making money, one small chip a day at the jewelry, one small chip a day at, you know, fucking backup plans and social lives and Mm -hmm. like. um, I know, it's it's like, it's really hard. Like, you got to be a special type of person, not have kind of like, not have like whether, you know, social life or not have like, family you want to spend time with yeah. not have like not have uh no I it's I, I don't know it's it's a bunch of these things it's like it's like you listen to, like um you, what's his name gary v talk about like you got, put, yeah. put in all these hours yeah, yeah. and stuff and it's like f- like like you really have to be a certain type of person like you like you know you gotta you gotta ha- like be without a lot of things and then also have the motivation on top of that, to want all these things well, it's, in some ways. It, this go, This is a perfect way to tie it back to being in the conversation because it's not that you or I don't know that or, or what we need to do, that it's really as simple as cutting out all the bullshit and only hyper-focusing on music that would make us get there faster. Mm-hmm. We know this. It's about the want so it's not easy to do that because you and I want to go to our cottages and spend time with our family. You and I want to have social lives. Um, you and I want to have, well, at least I personally want to have, um, I enjoy so many things that I enjoy working on the jewelry company. I, war- I enjoy um, the uh, going to acting gigs and auditioning. I, I, I enjoy so many different things that uh, the, the reason why I take I spend so much time thinking about the right way to do things is because I want to do it all. Yeah. I always say that. I want to have my cake and eat it too. I want to work out. I want to have a social life. I want to eat right. And I want to be a fucking rock star that has a uh, passions on the side. And that has... So it's like the reason why... The reason why I'm so in, in, interested in motivation and life design is because... I hate the idea of of all or nothing. I lo- I like the idea of having your cake and eat it too. I want to do it all, and yeah. there's there's a way to do it all. I see I see people that do it all. Yeah, there are people out there that do it all. I like think of think think of the Jamie Foxes. Think of the uh, Donald true, but, Glovers. But but but, but I th- I think also that they 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 advanced one milestone at a time. Do you know like, that though, or do you think that? I I don't have proven like I haven't looked this up, but I feel like you know Kanye West, for example. Kanye West was like strictly beats, like wanted to be a rapper, right? He made his he made his name mm-hmm. rapping beats, um, and then next, you know, he wanted to get into get into clothing, right? So he like he went back to 
went he went to school and like like did an internship and like got into clothing and like hyper focused on that one thing once he had already like the foundation of another thing look again m- maybe but i also feel like i see people that get big on yeah. youtube yeah that have a podcast a youtube channel a clothing line and music yeah and they're like just doing i'm i'm, I'm not defending it i, was I just, know i, was, I i'm yeah. just saying like i don't know the i get i to, i say it even when i was theorizing on my opinions of of how you live your life i don't know the answer yeah if i did i would be the the fucking i would be on top of the world right now and, and i'd be like just do it how i do it i'm the best in the world I just, um, that's why I'm so passionate about it because the way I want to live my life is I want to do it all. And there are times when my motivation is right where I think I maximize the amount of time I spend on certain hobbies. And I, I, I have a formula that works for me where sometimes I can do it all and it's all working. Yeah. It takes an incredible amount of uh, want and drive to keep that, alive and i find what happens to me is that that want or desire to do it all is what wears down and then you know something starts slipping and then you start playing this like hopscotch back and forth between projects and it it, and it takes like these certain reset periods where um i get back to normal but I, i i'm confident there's a way to do it don't get me wrong there's things i would like to cut out of my life that are I have to do for money, right? Like if 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 money was taken care of, mm-hmm. and we could just do all the things we love, uh, hobbyistically, productively, like music and podcasting and stuff, um, for cash, things would get a lot more simple. So that that's what I'm saying. Like, if you wiped out, you know, uh, the the business stuff we do, the the real estate photography, the bartending. The, the odd jobs for cash, the the this and that. And we had an income from podcasting and we had an income from music. Yeah. The outlook would be a little bit different. Right. And then we'd have cash to spend to to output more music videos and more time in studio and, and things would move quicker and we would look like those guys that are hyper-focusing. And it's not a realistic vision for people that need money. So we, it's almost like you need to, you if you want to not sacrifice anything you gotta be fucking david goggins out there like you gotta be fu- like extremely mentally strong and i just i want to bring my passions back to focusing on that and, and taking the time to think and not distract myself and just recognize like i've written down on the sheet i made on january 1st 2020 and i laid out what that lifestyle looks like to the t and I was checking off every day if I did like these four to, I think it was like four to five basic principles every day. And if I knew if I did those, mm-hmm. I could have my cake and eat it too. And I could do it all. Yeah. And it was involved. It was just involved in recognizing when time is being wasted and when it's not. And that doesn't mean uh, I lived a life of no enjoyment. That meant I was able to do, I was able to do all the things I wanted to do because I just got right to the next thing and I just didn't fucking loafed. Yeah. Part of it's scheduling too. Like scheduling your time. Well, that was that's uh, one of the yeah, things. Yeah. It's one you have to you have to block your time perfectly and even if you spend 15 or 20 minutes loafing, you might have shifted everything. It like butterfly affected your entire day and it it sounds stressful but it's not because you're only doing these things that you already know you need to do and it's laid out so it's not like you need to spend 15 20 minutes of thinking what the next thing to do you already thought about it the night before and i know exactly what the next thing i need to do is and it's not something i can't do it's not something that's hard it's just something that i need to start and it's it's easy as just moving to the next thing so it's not impossible and um before COVID, i'd say we were always moving closer and closer and closer to that direction and then COVID sent me just to the moon. But you're back. I feel like I'm back. I, I had uh, an exceptional day. Keep the train rolling. That's what we need. You need the fucking... I, like, uh, I'm a high horsepower... Tr- 
train fucking car. What are they? Whatever they're called, like those uh, engines. It was uh, I, you? You need this guy fucking outputting that ten thousand horsepower diesel engine, just fucking cranking Ford without even thinking. Twenty thousand BTUs. That's an AC reference. Can't wait to go up to my AC room. <laughs> Speaking of AC rooms and can't wait to go up, should we... Uh, we can wrap this down. How about we... We have five minutes. How about we just talk about uh, two things? Yeah. We played live for the first time this weekend. Yeah. yeah, that was fun. And that's another reason why I got fired up to get back to normal. Just that thrill, just the enjoyment of, of singing and playing and watching the oh, videos back the video looked good so sick I'm we got a we got a content piece yeah sweet yeah i'm curious to see how the, the songs and everything we are firing up our traditional um schedule of uh managing the instagram i'm not too pleased with the last two weeks you're supposed to blow me out of the water i don't even owe you a dinner i i beat you this this has been your past week no, no, you had two weeks. You didn't put out a video. Oh, yeah. I didn't put out a video. So you're disqualified. Is that My it? week started today. Your week started last Tuesday. No. Yep. Uh-uh. Yeah. When I made you swear on your life, your mom's... I, I said swear on your mother. That was three weeks ago. Uh-uh. S- f- swear to God, that was three weeks ago. No. Yep. How in the world? Yep. Three weeks ago. I Dude, I, I had it calculated in my head. Look, you got to look back on the dates. Okay, either way, I'll still fucking like, like I, I, I don't think so because I, I feel like we restarted the beginning of the month because we said, let's let's restart the schedule. You had two weeks and it's not, we're not two weeks into July. No, it was started uh, the Tuesday, the last Tuesday we'll, of we'll, June. We'll look, we'll look back at the pictures, but. Um, it was the last Tuesday. It was right before you went to um, your cottage where you put out the one picture of us by the silos and then two uh, two pictures you put out two pictures but it was right bef- it was the weekend before the tuesday before you put out that silo picture and then we like i we, we'll, we'll, we'll look back we'll look back either way but either way either way um we just yeah like that's just been like another aspect that's floundered but again um with me, it's, if it's my weeks and I'm feeling the way I'm feeling right now, yeah, we already have a video that I'm going to edit up from our our uh, rip up north. Um, we're gonna we're gonna shoot some photos Thursday. I'll have a pretty decent week, even if it's just one week. Uh, and then the other thing is today, while I was returning the equipment from uh, the weekend playing north, yeah, okay. right, right up front of Long and McQuaid, yeah. I saw a bicyclist get crunched by oh, fuck, by a no. car. Yeah. Shit. What it would happen? Turning left into Long and McQuaid, the yep. guy turning left didn't see the bicyclist in the oncoming lane. Wait. So, wait. Sorry. Sorry. The um, like cars turning left. Cars turning left. And there's a bicycle lane going the other way. You know when you're heading west on Bloor and you're gonna turn into the Long and yeah. McQuaid parking lot. Yeah. Yeah. So you're there's waiting there to turn. Lane. Bicyclist was heading east. east. The guy made the turn. The bicyclist T-boned the car. Literally, face broke the windshield of the car. Get out. And the guy? Yeah. Unfaced. He wasn't losing it on the nope. driver? The chillest accident I've ever seen. Really? Dude, I thought you were going to say like this guy got was he wasn't wearing a helmet. Guns blazing. Nope. He was like a... He was a... DoorDash or whatever it's called, Uber yeah. Eats. Like he was a deli- uh, had a food bag on his back. Yeah, just fucking boom, just hits the windshield, and then he's just like standing there, <laughs> like he didn't he didn't. It's like he hit the windshield and like landed kind of back on his feet on the bike. Back tire was totally in the air. Like he yeah. hit this car, probably not going fast enough to like cause serious damage, but he did dent the windshield, and and then he just lands. And then he's just like looking around and everyone's like, oh, <laughs> oh. A lot of people saw. Everyone saw, like yeah. 20 people saw. Yeah. And then he's like, I'm all right. I'm good. What'd the car driver say? The car pulled in and he rolled down the window and he's, the car driver had no idea what to do. He's like, uh, 
do you, are you all right? And the guy's like, yep, I actually, uh, I, I think I'm good. And the guy's like, do you want my number or anything? Like in case? And the yeah. guy's like, no. And he's like, do you, do you have insurance? Like, I don't even know what to do. Like, what do you do? He's like, do you have health insurance? What, what like, what, what do you even do when you hit a cyclist? Like, yeah, who, like it's a, it's a bit of a, I would have no idea what to do. I would have no idea. So I, yeah, I, I, uh, the guy was just like, I think, uh, as long as my bike's fine and I don't need to pay for any of that on the car, like I'm good. The guy's like, no, you don't have to pay for it. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> yeah, it was my fault. Um, yeah. Honestly, I, I would have, uh, I would have preferred if it was like some hothead cyclist <laughs> who, uh, you know, thinks that, uh, <laughs> That, that, yeah, the world revolves around him because he's on a bicycle. Yeah, exactly. Can we take a moment? Because I know a lot of our friends bicycle, including uh, Cab Dog. Yeah. Don't be that person. You're doing a very dangerous thing, riding a bike. Cars can't see you. They can hear you. It's uh, just, just be careful. Don't ride aggressive. Don't be an asshole. And just don't trust a fucking car. Don't pass on the right when they could make a right turn. Mm-hmm. Um, but this guy, I don't think there's anything he could do. I think the guy made a left right in front of him. And uh, yeah, and in those cases, sue for all they got. <laughs> what? Uh, that's a good way good way to wrap it up. Um, um, all right. Well, you uh, go up and t- tinker with that AC. I'm going to go up to my crispy studio and finish editing this podcast. And what do you think about releasing last episode? Do you want to listen to it? Do you want to just like there was good content? There I thought was there was fun. like pretty good banter. Like if give, you give it anything. a listen objectively tomorrow, and if you yeah. like it, I'll double post. Yeah, okay. I'll uh, I'll I'll see what it's all about. Uh, also, if you if we do end up posting that for you listeners out there, I know we said we'll we'll get a guest on um, next episode. We tried and we sent out the invite, but unfortunately, it's still a little sketch. Like. You know, I, I sent out a, a, a feeler to a buddy of mine. He, he, he wasn't comfortable to come on the pod, and rightfully so, respectfully so. And I kind of thought about it too, and I'm like, do I really – I don't know, man. Like as much as I, I desperately – and we've been saying like, oh, let's just get a guest. Like fuck it. Yeah. We actually – I think we have to be a bit more responsible and try to find guests that are still in our kind of quarantine circles, like people in our close friends that we're seeing Yeah. that we have chosen to broke quarantine with. Maybe we can – start with them instead of just like, you know, reaching out to not randoms, but like friends of friends that we're not seeing face to face. Um, We'll try to figure it out. But also uh, this is my commitment to the listeners that Travi's back, which means uh, you're going to see some uh, better output out of the pod. You're going to see some content and uh, you're going to see the fruits of Robbie's last uh, 75 days of being on top of shit because we got a song coming out on the 21st. Thanks to uh, Robbie keeping that on track. And we're filming a music video in a couple weeks. So shout out Rob on that. And let's wrap it up. Let's go. See you next Tuesday. All the words I said were-